ಮಹಾಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀ ಜಗನ್ಮಾತ ಮಧುಸೂದನ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಮನಮೋಹಿನಿ ಮಹಾಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀ ಜಗನ್ಮಾತ ಮಧುಸೂದನ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಮನಮೋಹಿನಿ ಮಧುಸೂದನ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಮನಮೋಹಿನಿ ಧನಧಾನ್ಯ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀ ಆದಿ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀ ಧನಧಾನ್ಯ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀ ಸೌಭಾಗ್ಯ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀ ಸಂತಾನ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀ ವೀರ್ಯ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀ ಧೈರ್ಯ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀ ಶ್ರೀವರ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀ ಪಾಹಿ ಮಾ ವೀರ್ಯ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀ ಧೈರ್ಯ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀ ಶ್ರೀವರ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀ ಪಾಹಿ ಮಾ ಚಂಚಲ ಸುಮಂಗಲ ವಸುಂಧರ ವಸುಪ್ರದ ಪದ್ಮಿನಿ ಸುನಂದಿನಿ ನಿರಂಜನಿ ಭಾರ್ಗವಿ ಚಂಚಲ ಸುಮಂಗಲ ವಸುಂಧರ ವಸುಪ್ರದ ಪದ್ಮಿನಿ ಸುನಂದಿನಿ ನಿರಂಜನಿ ಭಾರ್ಗವಿ ಅಮಲೆ ಕಮಲೆ ವಿಮಲೆ ಹರಿವಲ್ಲಭೇ ಶುಭೆ ಅಮಲೆ ಕಮಲೆ ವಿಮಲೆ ಹರಿವಲ್ಲಭೇ ಶುಭೆ ಮಂದಹಾಸ ಚಂದ್ರ ವದನ ಶೀತಲ ನಮಾಮ್ಯಹಂ ಮಂದಹಾಸ ಚಂದ್ರ ವದನ ಶೀತಲ ನಮಾಮ್ಯಹಂ ಮಹಾಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀ ಜಗನ್ಮಾತ ಮಧುಸೂದನ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಮನಮೋಹಿನಿ ಮಧುಸೂದನ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಮನಮೋಹಿನಿ ಮಧುಸೂದನ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಮನಮೋಹಿನಿ the ninth chapter named royal knowledge royal secret raja vidya raja gukhya ninth chapter begins with bhagwan glorifying spiritual knowledge so what does bhagwan say arjuna you being fit for this knowledge i am going to give you this knowledge and what is the fitness or what is the qualification the qualification is one must be an anasuyu what is anasuya anasuya is the virtue the one who has this virtue is called anasuyu the one without asuya what is asuya guneshu dosha avishkaranam trying to find fault in something where there is no fault 
so arjuna you have this open mindedness you don't have this defect of fault finding and moreover you have shraddha faith in this teaching so therefore i am going to give you this greatest knowledge which is guhyatamam the greatest secret i am going to give you this knowledge along with the way in which you can experience it i am going to give you information as well as the means of transformation the spiritual knowledge is not something to just intellectually know it is something to be experienced realized why should one know it yet nyatva ashubhat mokshase if one gains this knowledge one will be free from all kinds of inauspiciousness all negativities of the mind all sufferings of the world it is possible by gaining this knowledge what kind of knowledge is this it is royal knowledge rajavidya rajaguhyam it is a royal secret also very very rare few know this knowledge this knowledge is uttamam pavitram the greatest purifier the very tendency to commit sin will be destroyed because the very sinner in us will be destroyed by this knowledge it is pratyaksha avagamam one which you can directly experience in the beginning you need faith no doubt but later on when you experience in yourself you no longer have to fa- have that faith because you know it by direct experience at the same time it is dharmyam what is dharmyam which takes you to your own dharma to your own true nature which makes you aware of who you are of what your true nature is and at the same time it is kartum susukham very easy to practice and once you have gained this knowledge it is avyayam it is imperishable it will remain with you all the time so therefore arjuna you must gain this knowledge but those people who disregard this knowledge who neglect this knowledge who don't give value to this knowledge who don't have time for this knowledge what is the price they have to pay aprapya mam nivartante mrityu samsara vartmani such people they again and again come back to this world in different manifestations in different bodies meaning janma marana is guaranteed for them there is no liberation hmm? aprapya mam not having gained me such a wonderful chance they miss such a wonderful chance of knowing of becoming the infinite the immortal so therefore arjuna this knowledge must be gained so after having glorified the knowledge and why should a teacher glorify the knowledge the knowledge has to be glorified because then alone the seeker will be interested in knowing that knowledge so these are inspirational verses trying to motivate the seeker trying to grab his attention before giving the knowledge all the teachers must learn this technique whenever you give knowledge before that you glorify the knowledge you give the importance of this knowledge create that kind of interest in the student and then give the knowledge now bhagwan gives the essence of knowledge in two verses these are the most important verses in this chapter let us chant verse number 4 and 5 जगदव्यक्तमूर्ति मत्स्थानूतावस्थि न 
न च मत्स्था भूता पश्य मे योग भूत भृन्न च भूतस्थ ममात्मा भूत भावन टुगेदर मया ततमीद जगद व्यक्तमूर्तिना मत्स्था सर्वूता न चाहम तेवस्थि न च मत्स्था भूता पश्य मे योग भूत भृन्न च भूतस्थ ममात्मा भूत भावन यस वॉट इज दट रॉयल नॉलेज रॉयल सीक्रेट विच इज बींग स्पोकन ऑफ सो हियर आर दीज टू वर्सेस विच गिव्स इन एसेंस दैट नॉलेज वॉट डज भगवान से मया इदम सर्व जगत ततम इदम सर्व जगत मया ततम दिस एंटायर यूनिवर्स इदम सर्व जगत मया ततम इज परवेडेड बाय मी दिस एंटायर यूनिवर्स इज परवेडेड बाय मी बाय द लॉर्ड but then we may ask bhagwan if you pervade the entire universe why is it that we are not able to see you if you are there everywhere we must be able to see you bhagwan says yes you are not able to see me because i pervade it in my unmanifest form avyakta murtina i pervade this entire universe in my unmanifested form what do you mean by unmanifested form so here the term used is avyaktam what is vyaktam so the definition says indriyaihi vyajyate iti vyaktam that which can be perceived through the senses is called as vyaktam perceived through the senses means what that which can be seen that which can be heard that which can be smelt tasted felt this is called vyaktam that which can be experienced by the five sense organs sense organs of knowledge this is called vyaktam so therefore what is avyaktam that which can never be experienced by the five senses so what does bhagwan say i pervade this entire universe but you cannot experience me through your senses i am there but it will not be available for your senses to experience now tell me isn't it a royal secret if someone doesn't tell you will you ever know this secret never god says in every particle in every atom i am present this is statement number 1 now comes three statements which are very interesting statement number 1 matsthani sarvabhutani sarvabhutani matsthani all the beings inert or sentient everything exists in me chara achar sthavar jangama whatever exist in this world exist in me this is statement number 1 mat sthani sarva bhutani statement number 2 na cha aham teshu avasthitah i don't exist in them what is the first statement the whole world exist in me second statement i don't exist in them okay third statement nacham sthani bhutani they don't exist in me 
what is the third statement they don't exist in me what is the first statement all exist in me second statement i don't exist in them third statement they don't exist in me is it possible if you find if you just observe carefully first statement and the third statement they are contradicting first statement says mat sthani sarvabhutani third statement says na cha mat sthani bhutani here comes a problem within before completing two verses there is a contradiction so therefore bhagwan says pashyame yogamaishwaram look at my divine maya pashyame yogamaishwaram so it is said that bhagwan vedavyas ji he wanted a stenographer right he wanted someone to write down mahabharata so as he was going to narrate he wanted someone to write down so whom did he approach ganesha ganesh ji put a condition vyasarshe i will write provided what is the condition you must continuously keep on narrating because once i start writing i will not stop this is my condition vyasarshe said fine but then i will also put a condition the condition is whatever you write you must understand and then write <laughs> this is my condition so ganesh ji accepted so it is said that whenever vyasa rishi wanted a break <laughs> he would put one naughty verse naughty means what n a u g h t y as well as k n o t t y <laughs> whenever he wanted a break he would put such a verse and this is one such verse so by the time ganesh ji would think and find out what it is he would have done his job and he would have come back so this is what they say so let us now see what this verse means so these three statements you keep in mind what is the first statement all beings so here bhutani doesn't mean only living beings living as well as non being non living beings meaning whatever exist in this world all beings exist in me this is the first statement second statement i don't exist in them third statement they also don't exist in me right yeah now these statements can be understood first through examples let us take some few examples now these three statements can be true only and only if one is absolutely real the other is absolutely unreal otherwise these three statements cannot be true to give an example snake rope example very famous so now the rope is saying what does rope say the snake is existing in me is it fine yes because if the rope were not there you wouldn't have had the notion of snake so there is a rope lying there and this person is seeing a snake there because there is no proper light so this person imagines that there is a snake actually it is only rope now the rope is telling this person <laughs> let us assume what will rope tell the person that snake which you are observing that snake exist in me it is true right second statement i don't exist in the snake meaning what i don't depend on the snake i don't depend upon your imagination of the snake i am independent of your notions i don't exist in snake and the third statement the snake doesn't exist in me from the absolute point there is no snake at all have you got the point one is from the relative standpoint from the worldly standpoint the other is from the absolute standpoint statement number 1 is from the relative standpoint statement number 3 is from the absolute standpoint 
another example sand and mirage waters so the sand says the mirage waters exist in me second statement the sand i don't exist in the mirage water meaning i don't depend upon that mirage water and the third statement actually mirage water doesn't exist in me is it clear yes so in this example you will find one is real the other is unreal another example the furniture and the wood the wood says the chair exist in me but i don't exist in the chair actually chair doesn't exist in me in the sense what exist is only wood and chair has no independent existence right any other example <laughs> we can give plenty of examples golden ornament and the gold what does the gold say i exist i mean the ornament exist in me i don't depend upon the ornament and from the highest standpoint ornament has no independent existence what exists is only me another example mud and the pot these are all the examples given in the vedanta and the best example the dreamer and the waker what does the waker say the entire dream world exist in me without me dream world have no existence so the entire dream world exist in me i don't exist in the dream world meaning i don't depend upon the dream world dream world cannot affect me and the third statement actually dream world has no existence of its own at all what exists is i alone examples are very easy to understand <laughs> now let us come to the real thing hmm? here what does bhagwan say mat sthani sarva bhutani all beings exist in me i don't exist in them i don't depend upon them actually speaking they also don't exist in me so there are two things now one is lord the other is the world now which is real and which is unreal which is real the lord is real the world is unreal now tell me isn't it a great secret <laughs> what is our experience <laughs> world is absolutely real i doubt the existence of god this is our <laughs> isn't it that's why it is called rajaguhyam or guhyatamam jnanam there are very many people who don't believe in existence of god they should not be blamed because that is how the creation is made now we have to analyze this situation god says i alone exist if at all you think that something else exist it is only your wrong notion it is only your misunderstanding now here which god is being spoken of here not some god with four arms with kirita with sudarshana chakra gada etc that is not the god which is being mentioned here here god is in the form of avyakta murti unmanifest so therefore it has to be taken as nirguna nirakara swarupa of god which is nothing but sat chit anand in short it is a pure consciousness in each and every one of us consciousness in us is what is termed here as i when bhagwan says i pervade who is this i consciousness in each and every one of us now where do you see this world this world is experienced where do you see this world isn't it in the mind without mind can you experience the world 
Now we have to prove that this consciousness is the very substratum and everything seen is unreal, it's an illusion. This is what we are trying to prove. So where do you see this world? Isn't it through your mind? Can you experience this world without mind? No. So therefore, it is our experience that without mind, world will not be experienced. So therefore, if I have to experience the world, there has to be a medium called mind. Yes or no? Yes. So therefore, the world can make itself present to me only if there is a medium called mind. Meaning, the world borrows its existence from mind. Now the thoughts are going to be subtler now. Without the mind, world cannot be experienced. The world is experienced in the mind. So which is the support and which is the supported? Mind is the support. World is supported. One is ashraya. The other is ashrita. World is ashrita. Mind is ashraya. Yes or no? Yes. Take our own experiences in life. If the mind is not available, in deep sleep mind is not available. So therefore, are you experiencing this world? No. If the mind is not there, the world will not be experienced. Mind has to be there and it has to be in the waking state. Even in the dream state, you will not experience this world. So for, so therefore, the world depends on the mind for being experienced. Now the question is, where does this mind depend upon? What is mind? It is nothing but thoughts. Yes? What is the definition of mind? Flow of thoughts equal to mind. So where do these thoughts arise? So when we sit for meditation, we find that I am aware of these thoughts. I am conscious of these thoughts. So which is the support? Consciousness is the support. In the light of consciousness, I am aware of my thoughts. Right? The world depends upon the mind. Mind is nothing but flow of thoughts. Thoughts are nothing but the ripple in consciousness. So therefore, what is the content? Content is consciousness. Let us take the example of ocean. The oceanic water says, the waves exist in me, but I don't exist in them. Meaning, I don't depend upon the waves. In fact, waves don't exist in me. In the sense, waves don't have independent existence. So, what is the only thing which exists? It is oceanic water. You remove water from the waves, what exists? Nothing exists. Wave is nothing but the name of a form. The moment you remove the content, the essence, nothing remains. In the same way, the world is experienced through the mind. Mind is nothing but flow of thoughts. These thoughts are ripples or waves in consciousness. So what essentially exists? It is only consciousness. And that is the truth. And that is what Bhagwan says, I. So now tell me, is God far away from you or not? <laughs> how near is Bhagwan from you? Or how far is he from you? He is not at all far. He is the very consciousness in you. Now, is there any moment when you are not experiencing this consciousness? Not at all. Every experience of ours is in the light of this consciousness. I am conscious of the sound. So there, in the light of consciousness, I am aware of the sound. In the light of consciousness, I am aware of the colors. I am aware of the form. 
i am aware of the touch the taste the smell etc in the light of consciousness this light of consciousness in you is the truth is the ultimate it is immortal it is infinite it is god now normally where is our attention except upon this light of consciousness everywhere our attention goes isn't it <laughs> as far as this light of consciousness is concerned we have taken it for granted or many times we are not even aware of it to give you an example if i say what do you see what do you see so everyone will say hand or fingers or whatever but there is one thing which you are seeing but even then you are not seeing <laughs> what is that the light because of which the hand is seen yes or no if the light is not there you will not be able to see it but the moment you see the hand your attention goes towards what is seen rather than because of what you are able to see it you miss the light you get involved with what is seen so what is bhagwan saying here instead of paying attention to what is seen pay attention to that because of which you are able to see then you will have direct experience of me then your jnanam will become vijnanam then this piece of information will become your experience do you want to experience god you can directly experience as your own self now tell me how do you experience this consciousness you experience it as i am yes or no yes i am i am now this is not a word it is something which is your own experience this i am experience in you is nothing but experience of god then why is it that we are not able to experience that infinitude or the supreme bliss if this i is god why is it that i am not able to experience that perfection of god it is because we have gathered certain wrong notion about this i and this wrong notion gathered about i is called ego or ahankara so what are you supposed to do you have to do only one thing try to find out who this i is now how did we gather this wrong notion about myself this wrong notion we have gathered through our own wrong understanding or misunderstanding or wrong inference to give you an example each and every one of us we are trying to know ourselves hmm? and now what do how do we try to know ourselves by comparing with it with others through our experiences in life so when i find that a person is available for interaction when that person is born and that person is no more available for interaction once that person dies so then i infer that the person's body's existence is his existence yes or no are you able to follow what i am saying this has come out of inference when that person is born i am able to interact with the person once that person is dead the body seems to be dead so i am not able to interact with the person therefore i assume that he is no more existing so therefore my definition about i is i am this body if that is true with him it should be true with me also so what is my definition about myself now i am not knowing myself as pure consciousness i am knowing myself as this limited body hmm? yes or no yes now after having identified with this body now whatever happens to this body it appears as though it happens to me because of identification now slowly slowly i start gathering information about myself by comparing with others i find that someone is able to think deep he is very intelligent 
I compare with that person and I say, I am dull. Now see, how I am forming opinion about myself. I am dull, I am intelligent with respect to in intellect. I am not very cheerful. I am a moody person. This is with respect to mind. I am thin. I am fat. I am tall. I am short. I am dark. I am fair. This is with respect to body. Now see, I am defining myself with respect to my instruments. With respect to my equipments. And slowly, 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 this self-definition becomes very, very strong. This notion about myself becomes very strong and ultimately after so many years and so many births, when this notion becomes very strong, it appears to me as though this notion is absolutely real. Are you able to follow? Now what is my understanding about myself? This is me, that's all. Now tell me, if you identify with a limited body, mind, intellect, what will be your experience? Your experience will be suffering alone. Because who are you? You are infinite. Now just imagine an infinite being is confined to the cage of a limited body. What will be your experience? It will be suffering alone. Because what you want is infinity. But what you experience is finitude. I am of the nature of, I am immortal by nature. But what do I experience when I identify with the body? I experience mortality. I have a birth date. I will soon have a death date. Now tell me, is there anyone who wants to die? No, everyone wants to live. This is a natural desire in us. How did this natural, how did this desire come into us? This desire has come into us because our nature is immortality. We are Sat. Sat means existence. Existence means what? Independent existence which can never know non-existence. Death is non-existence. So therefore, we don't want death. We hate death. Why do we hate death? We hate death because it is not our nature. But the problem is, now that we have got identified with the body, body has to die. And therefore, body's death appears to be my death. What is the nature of the body? Asti, Jayate, Vardhate, Viparinamate, Apakshiyate, Vinashyati. Six modifications. These are the modifications which any body has to undergo. It exists, it is born, it grows, matures, decays, dies. Now what happens when you identify with such a body? What will be your experience? I am born, I am growing, I am maturing, I am decaying, I am dying. The biography of the body becomes as though your biography. How did it happen? It happened because of your identification. So what is the solution? The solution is to disidentify yourself with the body. If I improve my body, will the problem be solved? In this world, that is what we see. You are not trying to solve the problem. Everyone is trying to beautify the body, improve the mind, Improve the intellect. Of course, no doubt, when your equipments are improved, you will find some relief. But remember, that is not what you are seeking. What are you seeking? You are seeking infinity. And infinite joy can never be as a result of finite efforts in improving BMI, body, mind, intellect. It can never happen that way. Some relief you will find, no doubt. But that is not what you are seeking. Ultimately, you are seeking Unlimited happiness, unhindered happiness. So what is the solution? The solution is disidentification. Now this technique is what is being mentioned here. So at the seat of meditation, what are you supposed to do? 
instead of paying attention to what is unreal slowly withdraw the attention and start paying attention to the real this is all what we have to do are you able to follow what i am saying the concept is subtle we will spend more time here because this is the very core of the ninth chapter the solution is disidentification disidentify with the unreal identify with the real stop paying attention to the unreal start paying attention to the real this is all what you have to do just remember that example of movie theater so you go to a movie theater and what happens as the movie unfolds you are sucked into the movie and slowly slowly the movie happening starts affecting you isn't it the hero goes through a good time you are happy the hero goes through a bad time you are unhappy now that movie character has nothing to do with you but those unreal movie happenings are able to affect your mind why because you have done a mistake and that mistake is identification i identify with the movie character and become miserable like that movie character so what is the solution there just disidentify don't pay attention to the film then you will find the film is no more able to affect you isn't it the same principle works here so first of all i have to understand who am i am i this body or i am something different so now bhagwan makes two clear distinctions one is the world the other is god so what is bhagwan trying to say the world is existing me i am not existing in the world in fact world has no existence of its own i alone exist so therefore the message is withdraw from the world pay attention to god and what is that god it is nothing but the consciousness in you kshetrajna it is called the knower of kshetra that knower is the pure consciousness now how to apply this so first of all we are seeing the world at the seat of meditation what are you supposed to do withdraw the mind from the world now when you are seated with closed eyes what do you see you see the thoughts where do you see you see in the light of consciousness yes now we will discuss certain fundamentals of meditation so at the seat of meditation what do you find you find thoughts in your mind now when you see the thoughts what are you supposed to say say these three statements hmm? what is that mat sthani sarva bhutani all thoughts exist in me the consciousness i am aware of thoughts thoughts are existing in consciousness then nacha aham teshu avasthitah i don't depend upon the thoughts i am just witnessing the thoughts this witnessing consciousness has nothing to do with the thoughts the thoughts cannot affect the witness just like the waves cannot affect the oceanic water just like the movie scenes cannot affect the screen just like the mirage waters cannot affect the sand just like the snake cannot affect the rope in the same way the thoughts cannot affect me the consciousness nacha aham teshu avasthitah nacha masthani bhutani really speaking those thoughts doesn't exist what exists is only consciousness so what are you supposed to do at the seat of meditation you have two choice either you can pay attention to the thoughts and be taken away by the thoughts into the world because what is thought a thought is nothing but something related to the world so the moment you start paying attention to the thought what happens you go along with the thought into the world you become extrovert 
the other option is start paying attention to consciousness then what happens the moment you start paying attention to consciousness the witnessing consciousness the moment you start abiding in the witness slowly slowly what happens is the thoughts die down now this is the formula what is the formula the moment you identify your the thoughts the thoughts multiply the moment you identify with consciousness the thoughts die the moment you identify with the thoughts thoughts multiply the moment you start witnessing the thoughts thoughts die so what are you supposed to do at the seat of meditation pay attention to consciousness paying attention to consciousness means you are interested in god paying attention to thought means you are interested in the world paying attention to thought means you are interested in the ego because ego is also nothing but thought ramana maharshi in upadesha saram makes it beautifully वृत्तयस्तवहम् वृत्तिमाश्रिता वृत्तयो मनो विद्यहम् मनः He divides all the thoughts into two He says there are two types of thoughts one is this thought idam vritti the other is i thought aham vritti All your thoughts in the mind can be divided into two idam vritti and aham vritti and bhagwan says vrittayah tu aham vrittim aashritaha all thoughts in your mind they take refuge in aham vritti i thought so therefore ramana maharshi says therefore destroy this i thought and once this i thought is destroyed the real i shines forth ahaminash bhajah mahantaya स्फुरति हृत्स्वयं परमपूर्णस द मोमेंट यू स्टार्ट वाचिंग दिस थॉट द मोमेंट यू स्टार्ट विटनेसिंग दिस आई थॉट आई थॉट डिसअपियर्स एंड द रियल आई शाइन्स फोर्थ स्फुरति हृत्स्वयं परमपूर्णस दैट सुप्रीम अनलिमिटेड परफेक्ट सेल्फ शाइन्स फोर्थ सो एट द सीट ऑफ मेडिटेशन व्हाट आर यू सपोज टू डू at the seat of meditation you will be seeing thoughts start witnessing the thought don't pay attention to it don't be interested in it the mind will bring so many kinds of emotions thoughts feelings imaginations ideas pictures what are you supposed to do don't show any interest because the moment you start showing interest what does it mean you are not interested in god you are interested in the world and since you are interested in the world the mind will bring more and more of such collections this is called wandering of the mind it is called as vikshepa vikshepa is happening because you are you are supporting the mind mind by itself has no power who is giving power to the mind you yourself by identifying with the mind you are giving power to the mind you are supporting the mind and the more and more the mind is supported it will bring more and more of world into your mind and then we have a wandering mind so what is the solution solution is stop paying attention to the thoughts start paying attention to consciousness So when you are paying attention to consciousness you are telling bhagwan bhagwan i want you such a person is called a sanyasi sanyasi is not a person who has put on some ochre color cloth whether you are a sanyasi or a samsari what decides your experience at the seat of meditation will decide if your thoughts are upon the world if your attention is in the world then you are a samsari going behind the samsar but if your attention is upon consciousness then you are a sanyasi sanyasi means a renunciate the one who has given up everything for the sake of god 
and this is possible only when you have tremendous love respect devotion for god how to develop it again bhagwan is going to say in the coming verses we will discuss all those things later so here you have to understand only one thing what is that the consciousness is real everything else is unreal it's an illusion so therefore what has to be done you have to pay attention to consciousness now how will i know whether my meditation is progressing in the right direction or not as you start abiding in consciousness you will start experiencing bliss this is the proof because what is the nature of consciousness it is sat chit anand anand is its nature so more and more when you come nearer consciousness as the thoughts die down in your mind as you start abiding in this consciousness you will start experiencing more and more joy and that joy is your own true nature this is the proof the more and more you go away from consciousness you will become more and more miserable the more and more you go towards god what should be your experience peace should be your experience joy should be your experience and it will come this is how we come to know where we are going wrong so whenever the heart is filled with pain understand your mind is away from god and the moment you start experiencing joy understand or you will know for yourself that your mind is abiding in god or consciousness both are same the test is in terms of pain the test is in terms of extrovertedness the test is in terms of restlessness so at the seat of meditation itself you can auto correct yourself by seeing the state of your mind are you able to follow so then what happens this jnanam becomes vijnanam vijnana means experiential knowledge how are you supposed to experience god you are supposed to experience as your own self how near is it even to use the term near is wrong because you are it it is nearer than your very breath so when bhagwan uses the term aham here understand he is referring to this consciousness which is there in each and every one of us is not some krishnas born in some treta yuga <laughs> no 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 don't keep him away in all the puranic stories all the stories are also based on this concept only to take the example of ramayana so we have that story so sita was living with rama in the forest and then suddenly what happened there comes a golden deer and then what happens till then sita was very happy with rama then for that split moment her desire she started desiring that golden deer which is this golden deer this golden deer is nothing but the attractions of the world hmm? and who is this sita sita is none other than jivas like us and who is this rama rama is none other than consciousness in us so then what happens sita started saying i want that deer then what happened her priorities got changed shuffled earlier her priority was rama first then world now her priority is world first let god be the means <laughs> which is the goal world is the goal god is the means pakka samsari attitude then what happened we all know what happened isn't it she was transported to lanka and what is this lanka <laughs> this lanka is nothing but this materialistic world where rama is absent who rules 10 headed ravana rules and what are what are these 10 heads dasha indriyas panchat jnanendriya 
panch karma indriya now when you listen to these stories understand they are all subjective things understand the symbolisms now sita understood the mistake ravana was trying to allure her tempt her what did she say she said no no to whom no to the ten indriyas i am not going to cooperate with you and therefore she was in the ashoka vatika what is ashoka a place free from sorrow isn't it there was only one place ashoka everything else was lanka it was a part of lanka but she was unaffected why she was unaffected because she chose to non cooperate with ravana who is this ravana <laughs> our indriyas along with the mind now during that one year she was constantly thinking of rama and ultimately what happened sita came back to rama raja isn't it this is nothing but our own story so in story form it is put i don't say that such a thing didn't happen but try to understand the significance there is a book called symbolism in hinduism and there our pooja gurudev has written this commentary beautiful commentary each and every character has been depicted who is this character he is a subjective something inside us this way so now at the seat of meditation what are we supposed to do we are supposed to pay attention to consciousness and how should we know this consciousness this consciousness has to be known as the supreme lord who is omniscient omnipotent the creator our mother and father etc with lot of love and respect we are supposed to meditate upon this consciousness and more and more you meditate you will experience peace the more and more you disregard this consciousness you will experience misery the problem is we are so used to misery that we are not even aware <laughs> that we are miserable that is why many times you are not able to bring back the mind we are not able to bring back the mind because we are not aware that we are miserable but as we keep doing this practice of meditation the more and more we start withdrawing the more and more we start abiding in this consciousness and more and more we start tasting this higher joy then the moment you go astray you come to know that you have mistaken so this practice has to be done now if you have understood these two verses the rest of the chapter is not necessary for you <laughs> this is the core teaching so why is it called secret it is called secret because we don't even know that this consciousness is none other than supreme lord bhagwan says it is susukham kartum very easy isn't it very easy <laughs> tell me abidance in this consciousness isn't it easy you don't have to depend on anyone anything any time any place this is something which can be done by everyone so therefore it is very easy and slowly slowly as you start abiding in this consciousness what happens is this i thought becomes weaker and weaker the ego sense in you becomes weaker and weaker the limitation which you start experiencing in you starts becoming starts disappearing and slowly slowly you start to experience a fullness in you a fulfillment in you a kind of joy in you a contentment in you and this experience is nothing but your true nature this is all what spirituality is drop the unreal hold on to the real that's all सर्वे सुखिन सर्वे सन्तु निरामया सर्वे भद्राणि पश्यन्तु मा कशिदुखभा 
Asato man sadgamaya Tamaso man jyotir gamaya Mrityor ma amritam gamaya Om shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om